Okay, so what we have here is uh, we're going to do, uh, we're going to show the preparation of a soil, of a triaxial soil sample uh, in a remolded state. We've uh, already uh, performed the, uh, the compaction within a mold. Um, now we're utilizing uh, uh, the, the split miter box to uh, trim the sample, uh, top and bottom, and uh, make sure that it's nice and square. Uh, relative to uh, top and bottom, so it sits level within the sample. Now this is the split miter box, the top half, the bottom half is there, that the sample sits in, you put the top half on. And that allows us to get a nice flat surface on both sides. We'll use a knife or some sort of trimming device. And we'll trim off. Just to make sure we have everything nice and level. You want to do this as best you can without disturbing the sample in any way. On real soft samples, uh, you want to make sure that you, you're, you're very cautious of it. Now, I don't have a, uh, typically you want to use a knife. Uh, I don't have a knife here. Um, and the sample is a bit wet, but it's okay. It's just for demonstration purposes. For uh, actual sampling and testing, you want to make sure that you have, um, you have the appropriate tools and the sample in the right condition. Same with this side here. Uh, lubrication of the inside of the mold is, uh, is helpful. Getting the sample out. Um, we've, we've used uh, some oil on this one, but you can use uh, uh, Vaseline or any kind of petroleum jelly. You can use uh, any kind of silicon-based oil or any kind of oil that, that won't soak into the soil so much, but allow it to not be uh, uh, sticking, not stick to the mold. Like I said, this, uh, this soil sample is not ideal for this. That's what we have here. Sorry. Carefully, not to disturb the sample itself. Make sure it doesn't stick. Looks pretty good. Again, we want to make sure that it's nice and uh, solid. Then we would take uh, diameter measurements in at least three locations, and then height measurements in at least three locations, average them, and then we want to get a weight on it as well. Okay. Uh, prior to uh, uh, putting the the rubber membrane on. Uh, this is the suction membrane device is what they call it. This allows you, it's just a tool to uh, easily put the membrane on without disturbing your sample or damaging your sample. Um, the best way to do this is to uh, put your mem membrane inside the tube, fold one side over, Get it as straight as you can. Flip it over and fold the other side. Try, and try to get it as straight as possible. And what I like to do is make sure that you have about the same amount at the top as you do at the bottom. Get it as straight as you can. And you don't have any twists on the inside as well. And then what you do is you can, you can utilize, uh, what I like to do is put uh, an extra quick disconnect on the end of this hose and utilize the auxiliary vacuum supply put that in and what that does is you can see it sucked the wall of the membrane straight to the, the mold itself. Okay? So you can easily fit the membrane onto the sample, remove the vacuum, and then just lift up the membrane top and bottom. like so. Be careful not to damage your sample in any way. And your sample has your membrane on the outside of it. Ready to go. Okay. 
now what we want to do is um, prepare the sample, uh, prepare the cell to have the sample placed on it. And what you want to do is obviously we want to fill the void space within the sample with water and not air. We want to remove the air. In order to do that, we want to make sure that we don't have any air in our water that's in these tubes. So we want to make sure that all the air bubbles are removed and then we want to make sure also that we have any kind of space within here removed of all air also. So um, uh, what we have here on the top of each transducer, we have a little de-airing block with, with a little screw top on it. We can get our screwdriver and with a little pressure to each line, we don't need a whole lot, we only need about three or four PSI, maybe five PSI. Um, we have, so we, now we have a little pressure, we have our volume change just on bypass. We want to make sure we get all these little air bubbles out as best we can. The best way to do that is to have your top cap down into a dish of water and you can open that up to make sure that the air bubbles, there's an air bubble there flowing through. You keep it under water so you have all of just water in here. Also you have this valve in the back that is only used because you have two holes at your base pedestal. Uh, the back hole is connected to this valve and you can open this valve to let a little bit of uh, all the air because you have this uh, this hole there you want to fill with just water and no air so you allow water to flow through it but if you have bubbles you know that you still have air see there's another air bubble now you just have water flowing out a little bit of bubble air but mostly you have just water flowing out always have napkins or paper towels around to soak up the excess water that you have at the surface and you'll do the same thing with your pore pressure line here. And if you notice, I have a valve on either side of the pore pressure transducer. Open the back side and then keep the front side closed so you can make sure that you have all the air removed from this line and removed all the way through. So open this up slightly. There's not a lot of air bubbles coming out. And I want you to notice also between the two holes, you have the surrounding um, trench or cavity to allow you to f allow water to sit there and uh, and collect. So when you place your uh, your pour stone on here with your sample, you can go ahead and make sure that the uh, th there's no air in that in the, that falls into those holes. Okay, and it's pretty good. There's no air coming out of that. You notice the water rise a little bit. So we'll take a little bit of that off. That looks real good. And this is de-airing your system here. You want to do the same for this and the same for your back, your back uh, pressure tube as well. And while you do this, you want to make sure that the inside column does not drop below the brass nut at the bottom. Because then you'll just introduce air back into your line and that defeats the purpose. I would recommend you do the same thing with your cell pressure. Now the cell pressure water is not going inside your sample, but for accuracy purposes, you want to make sure you have the confining pressure, the right pressure. And if you have air bubbles in here, those air bubbles have to eventually dissipate within the water. And if you remove those, that, those air bubbles as best as you can beforehand, you allow for more accurate testing. So it doesn't have to be perfect, but I would recommend using the air water and allowing some of these uh, air bubbles to be removed as well. Sometimes you need a little higher pressure to get the air out. A lot of air bubbles in this tube here. Those are air bubbles coming out. If you the higher the pressure, the air will move out to the front. And there we go. We have just water coming out, which is great. Okay, we can go ahead and remove this pressure. Back to vent. 
and we don't have any air in the line. Okay. And I would recommend you keep your area clean and as dry as possible for a few reasons. One is to make sure that you don't have any, you, you can see when you have a leak at any time. And two, to just keep it clean and nice for testing. All right, I think now we're ready to install a sample. So um, before we get to this point, typically you would take your pour, you would have a pour stone at the top and, the, and at the bottom. Those pour stones are uh, obviously what they are. They're stones that have pores in them to allow for water to infiltrate through them, but not soil particles to come through as well. Um, the, the problem with that is that you have pores in those stones that you need to make sure they're saturated. They have water in them and not air. So. Typically, before this point, you would want to take your porous stones and either put them in a vacuum state, in a water bath with a vacuum, or uh, in a pan on a hot plate and boil the air out of the pore space and, and let them infiltrate with water. Either way. I have these porous stones that have been soaking in a bath um, for a while here, and uh, we can pretend like they were uh, boiled, and all the pore space are filled with water and other. How about that? Okay. And the last thing we want to do is because typically you do triaxial testing on clay particles, which are much smaller particles, you want to also have uh, filter paper between the sample and the porous stone to have one more medium to allow water to flow through, but soil particles not to. So let's go ahead and look at the procedure here. We have O-rings to tighten the rubber membrane. We have an O-ring placing tool, which I'll demonstrate here in a minute. We have filter paper. We have the top cap. Uh, what I've done also is I've I've put a top I've put two uh, O-rings around the top cap already, and you'll see why that's important. And I'll keep that underneath the water for now. Okay. So we'll take our sample with the membrane on it already, and we'll fold back the membrane. Did a little damage to our sample here. and uh, take our, our filter paper, submerge it in water to allow no air to be in, the, in it. Place it on the porous stone. Go from one side to the other to make sure that you don't have any air in between. And place this porous stone right on top of your base pedestal. And that's where the sample will sit. So take your sample. And then you want to pull your rubber membrane over the porous stone in the base pedestal. And there are two uh, cavities that ring or that that go around the base pedestal and the top cap. And that's where your O-rings go. Okay, so you take your O-ring placing tool. And this is how I like to do it. The point is to allow the sample to be protected from the outside pressure and the inside pressure okay, for saturation. So I take my O-ring, put it around my O-ring placing tool like so, drop this down over the sample, roll the O-ring off of the O-ring placing tool to the bottom uh, cavity, and then I pull my this is, just, like I said, this is just how I like to do it. I've had success with this. Pull my rubber membrane over the bottom O-ring. So I have a fold around that bottom O-ring that's inside that, uh, that cavity around the base pedestal. And then I use the second O-ring on the O-ring placing tool over the sample and over the outside of the membrane into that top ring around that base pedestal, okay? And that allows two modes of defense for water to infiltrate in and out of. Uh, two O-rings and a fold on the, on the membrane itself. Okay. Now we just do the same thing in reverse for the top. Fold back down. 
the membrane, filter paper, submerge it in water, the pour stone that's been either in a vacuum or boiled, filter paper atop the pour stone to make sure there's no air bubbles underneath. Place this in reverse now, filter paper towards the sample itself. And now this time we're going to take the top cap, plug our finger, over, put our finger over the hole. And place this right on top of the sample itself. And then we can fold up the membrane over the pour stone and the top cap, like so. Now, you understand the reason why I have the O-rings here already instead of out here because I would have to take the cap off to put them on. And now you understand also, you'll see the reason why there's a cut in this O-ring placing tool. Because you have to go into the tube and then place the O-ring onto the tool, like so. And this just allows you to put this on and to keep the sample protected. So roll the O-ring off of the placing tool onto the top cap, top ring, just the opposite of the bottom. Make sure it's in that cavity. Then roll the O-ring down, fold it down over the, or, or fold the membrane down over the O-ring. Make sure it's tight all the way around. O-ring placing tool and do it again. This time over. the membrane and over the top over it, like so. Okay. Now we have our sample on. We prepared the cell for it. The last thing we need to do is to put the top piece of our um, of our cell over, put the piston on. Um, there is one thing we'd like to do, you notice there's an O-ring here at the bottom. Now this O-ring will protect the cell from leaking. And we'll want to make sure we have a little grease, some silicone, clear silicone grease on that uh, O-ring. I have a little bit here that I have. Sometimes this comes in a tube. You just put a little bit of grease on this O-ring. Make sure it's nice and clean. And you've got this waterproof grease has a better seal for, for the bottom side of this. So you want to make sure also that the piston can move once it gets in here. It's nice to have an extra set of hands to help out with this if you need. But you want to do this without damaging the sample, but making sure that the piston is inside that top cavity of the top cap, but not putting any force onto it but just making sure it's inside that cavity itself. And you can do this by this piston restraint clamp here. Just like that. That's good. And you don't, like I said, you don't want to put any force onto it. You just want to make sure that the piston stays in the right spot. Right into that cavity. Okay. Then you want to align the top and bottom piece of the cell. And then you have locking rods that go into those pieces. Make sure they're loose, put them in the top first.